Welcome to another conversation with HPQ after they've put out a press release. Um, we are happy to once again join uh, the CEO, Mr. Bernard Torillon. Mr. Torillon, it's always a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for inviting me. So let's talk about uh, this new press release, um, the title HPQ Gen 1 Nano Silicon Reactor successfully produces first samples of nano silicon material. Um, this is exciting. I know this is exciting for HPQ and we've been, you know, following the story up to this point. And uh, I have some quick, quick for you. I know it's been a busy week of, for you. Um, mm -hmm. So um, now, finally, um, Gen 1 a nano silicon reactor produces the first batch of nano silicon materials. How do you feel about this? I feel very good. But um, I never had any doubt that this moment would arrive. Um, in an R&D project, um, you know, you, you, you deal with situations that arise, resolve, and move forward. Um, you know, it, it would have to have been something massive for us not to reach this point, problem massive, which we didn't, for, didn't come, along, come along. So um, I never had any doubt it, it happens, but I'm, you know... It, it, it's like one of those things. It's a box you have to check, <laughs> done, <laughs> and you know, now, now, now we can start getting down to the serious business, which is getting, making more material and then you know improving the material. Now, talking about what you achieved at this stage is um, now in the press release you cite three main objectives that the uh, the reactor testing program achieved. Um, without mm -hmm. going back to listing all of them, could you just like summarize how important these the, these steps are, these objectives are? Well, they were basically, they're the three <laughs> objectives. They're, they're the simple definition of what we need to accomplish to be able to, to think about of, of having an economical commercial scale process. Mm -hmm. um, so the Gen 1 is a batch process system designed just to test that the system work, but it needed to test three things. A, can we make sub 150 nanometers material? Because there are some clients, uh, well, because the 150 nanometers is the, the threshold in the literature, which says below 150 nanometers, uh, your material won't crack when it charges its discharge, create other issues, but won't crack or discharge. Um, that's one issue. So we needed to, to see, can we make at least sub 150 nanometers? We did, we beat that, we made, we made the sub 100 nanometers. Second question to see if your process can be economical is can we reach a production output that will be uh, that will allow us to be economical. So if we're able to make the material, but we can't really make a heck of a lot of it, uh, it doesn't make any sense. So that threshold also was met. We now know that we in the same size system will produce more. We should be producing more on an hourly basis. So those those are really the key points. And the third one is um, because the, the cycle of testing at the beginning is very short. You know, it doesn't take us long to know if the material is good or not good. Um, so that's that's that, that's where we are. The, the third thing is, can we start making silicone material? Is it a mix? It's, it's, it, it, they'll still be refining of the work, but the balance of the material we produce during one of those first qualification, one of the first tests, is a mix match of material that can, it can be all of them can be used are used in the battery space right now so this is why we said we made you know silicone material we're very confident with it and we know that with some subsequent tests we will improve it's the same process we went through for the qrr it's the same r d process that Pyro went through for um plasma optimization so we're in the right spot it took us a little bit longer than we wanted to be to be in this spot but you know we're, we're in the right spot so we're ready to move forward well, better get it right then, hurry, and then yeah. start giving issues. Um, now, Gen 1 is done, uh, which yeah. means you are moving to Gen 2. I, at least that's mm -hmm. the plan from what I get in the press release. Mm -hmm. What can we expect for, in Gen 2? I know you've already mentioned a little bit, but specifically, uh, okay. like, what can we expect? Let me just clarify something. Uh, Gen 1 is done in the sense that, you know, it reaches... The goal, but we will still just like we did with the uh, when we did the QRR, uh, we are still going to use the Gen One system um, in whatever form it is um, to continue to develop material for tests. 
to develop, to send material to, to potential end clients, which are approaching us and demanding it because it, it can generate enough material for us to send samples uh, and continue to give us valuable data. But the Gen 1 system is a batch process system, which is normal. When you, when you start the process, you start first system, you do a batch. The Gen 2, um, in addition to being bigger, okay, then we start in the semi-continuous process. So we start going to the next stage. The next big hurdle, okay, is to go from a batch process to a semi-continuous process toward a commercial process. Um, we don't expect to have, you know, we don't expect not to reach that goal, but this is where we are in the R&D and it's going to be part of the design, part of those, those things. You know, there, there's a lot of issues that, not issues, but just, re, you know, R&D issues that, that you have to deal with to, to, to fix and get the system moving. So, you know, we can continue to work for a little bit for the, with the Gen 1, but we're pretty close to having enough data on hand to start the engineering process and the design process for the Gen 2. Yeah. Um, and just like we did for the QRR, if something comes into it later and we can always adjust the system, but, you know, we can start that phase, which um, I think, you know, what may have took, taken us longer at the beginning will at the end pay pay handsomely its reward at the end uh, because those are lessons we would have to learn anyway. You probably heard of this news already. The U.S. just announced an ambitious goal, you know, that will require half of all auto sales in the country, for those who, who didn't get the news, uh, to become um, all electric by 2030. Now, this is something people, you know, people like us in the business, we always dream about, but apparently it's happening. Um, you know, the White House is, is putting out this ambitious goal. Yeah, so it's time to do that. But the big problem is, and the elephant in the room is, yes, it's good to uh, make such a, an ambitious announcement, but can the market scale, can producers, can battery manufacturers scale fast enough? I mean, this is in 10 years. So is it in nine years? Because 2030 is nine years. Because nine this years. is 2021. So between now and then, current battery technology, we all know, cannot um it can't scale that fast or um or we can't have the the, the energy densities range and all mm -hmm. that right which interestingly um silicon anodes solve much of those problems now your quote in this press release says basically hpq nano has a mm -hmm. solution if i can be audacious to say that <laughs> um but um can you explain Am I wrong to say HPQ has a solution? HPQ Nano has a solution. Well, actually, HPQ since the beginning has been, you know, had the foresight to understand the problem before it occurred. And I think in 2018, when the Quebec government agreed to finance our pilot plan, it was fundamentally because, you know, I, I was able to convey to them, maybe not to the market at large, because you know, it, was, it didn't get too much traction, but at least I was able to convey to the government that it just doesn't make any sense right now the way solar panels are manufactured. Uh, I don't think that many people realize if you buy your solar panel from China, you might as well buy yourself a diesel generator for the first three years because you're going to be generating as much CO2. Um, but, you know, for, from 2018 to 2021, I think that argument was um, not paying any fruit. I think uh, investors... Uh, People that took decision only cared about profit and they wanted the cheaper, cheapest material. And I've said this many, many times. Uh, one of the big advantage or the big changes that's going on, the, the ESG, environmental, social and governance rules are coming into it, which means that for a product like silicone, the product we're doing, which is incorporated in other end product, now it's now becomes important to the entire value chain. So the work we've been doing since 2014 allows us to have an incredible position in this regard. But the goal is incredibly ambitious. Um, will we be able to attain it? It will need companies like HPQ to, to be able to advance to develop material. It will need anno manufacturers to figure a way to use our materials to make more efficient batteries. And it'll be an ongoing you know, development race. What position HPQ very, very well to benefit from this is that because we've decided to focus on producing, as you said correctly, silicone is needed to make the batteries. Uh, you've been in this, you've been in a solar business, you've listened to it. 
uh, since the beginning, everybody says we got to replace silicon. And that's never happened yet. Um, we might end up going some dual s s solar cells, but still, silicon is still the dominion, the the dominant material. I believe that silicon will become the dominant material. It will replace graphite, but it may take 20, 30, 40 years, but still not going to change the fact that demand for the material is going to be massive. Now, the entire process chain of manufacturing of going from quartz to raw material to silicone metal, the purity required to nanoparticles, that's the crano HPQ is involved in, and which means we will have multiple, you know, end product buyers. You know, the, the simple truth is anybody that, you know, says they're an anode manufacturer working on silicon means you're an eventual client of HPQ. Why? Well, because just like in the solar business, the feedstock for everybody is the first material we're doing, which we know we can make cheaper than everybody else. And the second material is we have a much simpler process. Um, so it's, it's going to be very, very exciting, you know, I think 2021 so far has sort of been the year where we get ready for the next step. But 2022, end of 2021, 2022 is going to get to be even more fun. Um, and this is not a situation where uh, revenue, getting a contract for revenue is the key. It's just getting the ability to build it. If you take a look, uh, I, uh, if you take a look at Amazon for many, many years, people didn't understand what Amazon's business plan was because they were just building up their infrastructure for at one point, their infrastructure became the king. It's a bit what we're doing. We're building up the infrastructure to make the silicone that battery manufacturers are going to be needing, uh, animal manufacturers are going to be needing. Um, and at one point, it's going to become, you know, demand is going to go through the roof. Like, I don't foresee any issues with demand. Demand is blue sky. It's just, we have to go through the steps we're going through to get there. Nobody else. Um, everybody that's entering this piece is going to have to do the same thing, but they're going to have one issue where they're going to get the silicone they needed purity for battery break. So um, eventually people will realize that, you know, QRR silicone is basically battery grade silicone. And once people make that equation. So I saw a question online and I want on one of my chat boards and I wanted to ask you that question. What's the difference um, between the nanosilicon particles that HPQ Nano would produce and carbon coated nanosilicon particles. Is there a difference? Is it the same yeah. thing? Well, <laughs> in the definition, there is. Okay. One is a silicone, the other one, you just put a carbon into it. If you read our press release, we've been doing some work, some research on this, but it's not, it's not our, okay, it's not our main phase. If you go back and read our presses, we actually signed an NDA with a um, advanced material company, which developed some of those processes. And their problem that they had, which we're working on resolving both of us mutually together, is that yeah, okay, it's nice. We you know we we got this great way of you know encoding the freaking silicone to make a good batteries, and they're all stuck with the same problem. The problem is it can't be economical until you manufacture your nano silicone and can sell them at a price where we can make money, and you can sell it and you can make it at a price where you can make money. That's the entire game. Carbon encoded silicone just said it. It's it's like the difference between plain vanilla ice cream cone and chocolate coated, basically dip. That's it. Okay, it's overly simple, but think about it this way. At the end, it's still the the, the ice cream that, that makes it good. I don't I don't know if the analogy is my best one yet, but you know it's what I've been trying to come up with. But basically, it's like it's it's sort of funny because it's. If you're just focusing on coding, you're going to be stuck needing the silicone. So we, you know, it's not a high priority research for us, but we've done some research. We, we've, we've dabbled. We are, we are dabbled. We're working on this concept. But, you know, and I mentioned at one point, in our patent that we filed for the nano reactor, okay, it has a dual capacity, okay? Eventually, when we get there in the testing, Okay, we can probably coat at the same time as we manufacture. So we we under we understand what's going on in nano coating, okay? but we understand that the cross of nano coating silicone is getting nano silicone. <laughs> so, so the weakness of everybody that's in that in in that nano coating silicone problem is where are they going to get their nano silicone? It's been great to have you again, Mr. Turoyong, and uh, we hope to chat uh, with you again in the future, and we hope to see many more 
uh, press releases from HPQ, and then we'll invite you to uh, to ask the burning questions. Great. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye. Bye.